Yo, 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 what's up, this is episode 76, 24, till we get to 100, <clears throat> this is the Sneaker Boss Podcast, I am the African Caesar, all hail Caesar, emperor of Rome, monarch of the Roman Empire, ruler of, of the, the world, world. So my group actually showed up this episode like <laughs> last episode there was like one guy. Uh I got my main man Juan Neal. In the world, one man. It's Gwen. That's, what's That's up. how I land. That's up. How's the grand opening at your store? The most amazing experience ever in life, bro. That's what's up. We'll get to that. And then we got my man True just walked into the building. You can't handle the truth. Yeah, man, I, uh, the truth can't handle the traffic. Like the police <laughs> behind me right now, bro. Like I was driving so fast. Like they coming up the elevator. So if I, I guess snatch me a show, you know what happened. I know you. I think he was like on <laughs> seventy five at Davidson. I think he said where he was at. I believe, if I'm not wrong, that's far, but that's not that far. It's not that far, but he got here quicker than I thought he would. Yeah. <clears throat> um. All right, so anyway, this is the Sneaker Boss Podcast with Sneaker Bar Detroit, partnered with Crep Protect. What's the point of spending all that money on your shoes if you're not going to keep them clean long enough to get your money's worth? Practice safe snutting. Go to CrepProtect.com. If you want to make sure your shoes look just... (laughs) I guess my twin wanted to get in on the action. Uh, Also, make sure to follow us on Instagram at the Sneaker Box underscore podcast, on Twitter at the underscore sneaker underscore box. And on Facebook at the Sneaker Boss Podcast. And if you would like to talk to us live on the podcast, you can call us at toll free eight 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 seven nine nine five two six seven. Uh typically is every Monday morning between uh eleven <clears throat> and uh let's just say eleven and noon Eastern Standard Time. Something in your throat, bro. I didn't like the innuendo. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> I didn't just make the I'm, implication of I'm that question. Making, I'm just making sure, bro. Uh, anyway, uh, how was the uh, grand opening? Oh uh, man, it was dope, bro. Um, shout out to Tim Million, aka Tim Mile. If anybody's from uh, Michigan, um, he came through and DJ for us. Um, yeah. Man, it was it was just packed. It was so many people that came through through the whole day. A right. lot of a lot of people that I didn't even know heard about the grand opening. Man, like a lot of people in the city. Of Ferndale are happy that there is a retail in there. Shout out to Illionaire too. Um, Illionaire came through. He brought some people. He's going to be customizing full time out of um, the store now. So it was just it was just dope to like kind of see the whole vision come right. through the store, look exactly the way I wanted to look, and get the people's reactions that I, that I was hoping to get. So it was, it was dope. Billy uh, just actually started doing a couple of. Uh, um, midsole repaints and <clears throat> getting to a couple customs and things like that. Um, obviously, when you went in the back, something got in your throat on Saturday and you haven't been able to get it out. Um, other than that, like it's just been hey, amazing. What happens in the back of your store stays in the back of your store. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> that was amazing. Shout out to my little brother too for uh, coming through playing NBA Jam Tournament Edition, and he yeah. gave us a he donated his hoverboard to the store so that we may have tomfoolery every day. Right, you know, but uh, that's that was amazing. Um, oh, and Alienaire actually also, um, I'll send you a picture to post on the on the um on Instagram. He also, uh, made a custom gumball machine for me. He, I saw that. Yeah. yeah, he painted it as a um a cement a, a cement four pinball machine. I mean gumball machine. So that was dope. You know, what I'm saying every everything was just amazing. You know, I, it, it was it was a dream come true to actually see everything fall through. Well, that's what's up. I um one I I I saw the the grand opening was actually that Friday where you did no, the ribbon, ribbon cut. the ribbon cutting. Okay, my yeah, bad. Yeah. The ribbon cutting was Friday. Yeah, and you had quite the eclectic bunch out there. Like I was because when they finally got away from looking at the sidewalk and they did a panoramic shot. I was like, damn, that was a nice little group. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot of people that came. It was out the, the mayor there. <laughs> that was um that was the commissioner. Of the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. So he was like, he's the guy that knows the guy that knows the guy. They tried to get the mayor to come through, but um, the mayor actually, I think, is also a lawyer or something like that as well. Wow. But um, I don't quote me on that. But yeah, was like, it Andy uh, Griffith? Like, I don't right? Know. <laughs> Andy Griffith, ghost. 
<laughs> so, but yeah, um, yo, it was a lot of people. The funniest part was, um, you know, Illionaire Rose with like a whole bunch of tattoo artists and stuff like that. Right. So it was hilarious to watch my grandmother sitting next to this dude that had like tattoos on his head. It was like the greatest moment on earth. Like they're actually kicking it, having like a conversation. Like you don't see that every day. I'd have paid you know good money saying? to see that conversation. Yeah, but see, my grandma wears her war wounds on the inside, so she probably like on the inside looked just like the guy with all the tattoos. Probably. You know what I'm saying? I I even saw her try to show him Kendra how to spirits. throw. A, yeah, she tried to show him how to throw a Joy Road. So I was like, look at you. <laughs> look <laughs> at your, you. Your grandmother sounds awesome. Like, Throwing really, up gang signs. <laughs> but, you know, when we go to Atlanta, she gotta come with us. Yeah, but um, yeah, everything that like could have possibly went right went right you know what i'm saying right it was it was just a dope it was a dope move it was what it was what i worked hard for like a lot of people can't really you know what i'm saying get a store open like under two months because there's so much that goes into it right but um to get the space and be able to open it up in a month and a half was amazing and the reaction from the people we had like a Ferndale High School let out yesterday, right. and all of these kids came through. One of the kids actually called me on my cell phone, like we brought more kids to check out your store. <laughs> so it's, it's no telling, bro, like where the store is gonna go from here, and like the fact that the the city of Ferndale embraced me, you know, so I like to thank them as well. You got a good location, I tell you that much. Thank you, dude. Thank um, you. All right, so. Uh, the top 10 sneaker releases from the previous week. We got the Nike LeBron 13 Elite Red. Uh, that shoe. I like the pictures, but they look way better in person. Like I, The materials just click. It, it's Don't lie really, to me. really high in the back, though. Yeah. Yeah. I watched uh, uh, Mike Rich's video about it. I was like, yeah. Yeah, it kinda, <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Oh, shout out to Michael Richard, too, because now I'm famous because he follows me on Instagram. <laughs> Yeah, you're not official until Mike Rich yeah. or Michael Richard follows yeah. you on uh, any social media. Uh, we got the Adidas ZX Flux Racer, asymmetric, prime knit, teal. That's too much. Uh, that is too much. <laughs> that is a long-ass name. Pectorius right connected yep. to your elbowist, <laughs> down nice. to your kneecap. The hardy, har, har, har. You got the Air Jordan Retro Nine Low Bread. Those are nice. Um, they didn't sell out as ain't much. Ain't none of them selling. You know what? Ain't none of the lows really selling like that this no, year. No, no. Uh, I, I think don't the know. I'm tone not... will, but yeah, probably yeah, because it's such a different colorway. I, I mean, black and red. We've seen that. Yeah. Uh, Nike Air Foam Positive Pro University Red. This was kind of a surprise to me. I didn't think people were going to go that. I ain't gonna say they went crazy for them, but. Uh, it is an OG colorway, though. Yeah. I'm, Kinda. I, I just... Uh, well, Slug has the original one, and it's not... It Was that shoe it's, shiny? It, it looked no, a picture. It wasn't metallic. It was like... It was, that, it was, it was yeah. matte, right? It was a, yeah. yeah. University red. But Slug has the OG, and that red on the OG is a lot different yeah. than the one yeah. that released. It was like a little softer. Well, you it know was, Nike does that all the time. Whenever they release a shoe, they yeah. change yeah. the color yeah. slightly. It was like a hint of a petunia. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the yeah. hint of petunia? Yeah, yeah. Uh... Yeah, but it was. I mean, I I just don't like the ones. I mean, not the ones. I do like the ones. I don't like the pros. Yeah, that that bubble swoosh just throws off the phone posit look to me a little bit. Shout out to Scotty Pippen for the inspiration. (laughs) Yeah. Shout out to Scotty for passing on that shoe and letting Penny snatch it up. I'm. You know, it's funny too because. The phone posit, like, where does that fit in? Because you got the one, two, three, four. Like, it's not a numbered penny. But it's still a penny. Well, the phone posit one. Right, but it's not but, the one. You got the penny one, which is like that, uh, what they call the penny max one. And then I you mean, got the penny two. It's, it's such a great shoe. Do we have to put a number on it? That's, see, that's such a difficult yeah, way of looking Pizzen at it. Because Penny wasn't even the first person to wear the penny one. I mean, no, he wasn't. One. Mike, Bibby, remember, Mike Bibby was. Bibby, Penny, and then like when the pro, um, Tim Duncan was sharing the pro. Yeah. Scotty Pippen was sharing yeah. the pro. And it was one more person that was sharing the pro at the time. It was three different people. Like actually, the crazy thing <clears throat> is, even the uh, the Pippen Air, Tim Duncan, Scotty Pippen, and somebody else shared that. Well, right. It's like the Jordan Nine, Penny, uh, what Mitch Richmond. A lot of people wore the nines. Yeah, but them the nine, and the tens. If it's a Jordan, it's Jordans. You that's, know what I'm saying? That's true. But like uh, Nike tends to just go, oh, you want a shoe? We'll just put your number on the back. <laughs> like, bet it up. There you go. You act like it's yours. Um, I don't know. I, I, I love phone posits. I do, too. Um, I do, too. 
Yeah. Uh, then you got the Adidas Tubular Doom Tonal Pack. <clears throat> you got the Raph Simons Special Edition Adidas Stan Smith Metallic Copper. It's a lot of sleepers that people uh, don't go after. And it's funny because a lot of these shoes end up on the um, sales block. rack. Yeah, and yeah, then the like block. then people really realize like you got this heat, and then all of a sudden, once it is, it's funny how it is up on the sales rack. People see it on the sales rack, they buy it. All of a sudden, it becomes heat now because people just now realize the shoe. I exists. appreciate it. No, I do too. I it's just funny how that y'all. cycle goes. Like nobody wanted it when it came out, but now that it's no longer available, now people want it. Take naps during the daytime. <laughs> Uh, you got the Nike Kobe 11, uh, Fate to Black, Black Mamba. That was like the special colorway they did for the 11 for Kobe's. That black and gold one. That was yeah. like the best shoe of the whole pack. Yes. Yes, it was. <laughs> uh, you got the Sacconi Grit SD Miami. This is probably my favorite shoe out of all of these shoes on this list. Uh, the Nike Carry 2, EYBL. I like that. the box on that more so than I actually <laughs> They only came out in Brooklyn, so. I like box in general. But I feel you, bro. <laughs> yeah. EBY, EBYL always does like a nice little colorway or whatever, man. Yeah, I, they, I like that they pay homage to that that uh, that league. That was, that's like one of the best leagues probably in the United States. Yeah, they I, they usually don't miss. They bring them stars out too. Dude, last night I watched a video of Kobe at the record art. That just took me back all oh, the way back to the that was, mixtapes. Like it was like, wasn't that when they won their first uh, after they the won their first after they third after right? The third. Yeah, because they called them Lord of the Rings or something. Yeah, yeah. Kobe won Kenobi. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Uh, you got the Converse Chuck Taylor All Star Shroud. Um, Chuck Taylor's are coming back, and I think once again it's a sleeper. Uh, Ugliest release of the week. You got the Nike. So is this her? No, Jason, don't look. You have to prepare yourself. What? This Who's is seriously this? the ugliest is baby I've ever is this seen. This Jason Rich, human or otherwise. What? Whitney, you can't say that. All babies are cute. No, oh no, God. not all babies are cute. Uh, the Ugliest release of the week. You got the Nike SB Dunk Low. It shot wear tie dye. And oh man, I didn't put the. There was another one that too. Sounds bad. Yeah, right. yeah. Tie tie dye is not a good look on shirts, on anything. I don't think there's anything tie dye looks right on. But I can see you wearing tie dye shirt. Who me? Yeah. Uh, I got the green tie dye boy. I got the um. Who made that boy? The was it Rocksmith? Somebody made that tie dye boy, man. No, Mighty Healthy. Yeah, I got a mighty healthy tie dye shirt, but it's all green tie dye. It wasn't nothing too eclectic. Too yeah. eclectic. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> not, nothing too eclectic. Why do I feel like I helped you out with that? Eclectic, you've been dropped twice in the first fifteen minutes. Hey, of this I know, I know, bro. I've been reading dictionary. I, I told Caesar <laughs> I was coming for his head. Jesus, got I got a head whooping coming. Yeah, yeah, you got a head whooping coming. I got a head whooping coming. I'm gonna whoop your head. All right. Uh, you know what? We got um. Oh, just in case you guys don't know, we have uh, Matt Powell uh, coming on the show today. He is uh, an analyst. Oh, I get to it. Jesus, how much news do I have? Analyst today? for Forbes. Wow. No, he, an he's analyst. Because, uh, I made the list. I'm uh, the one million person on the on the hundred near list. Right. And I'm pretty proud of that. The hundred near list. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know they made a hundred near list. They are. They did, bro. It's it's nothing to brag. It, it was about. right. It's like a step above the dollar menu nearest. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's where Guru's getting his plaque right now. <laughs> you did it, Guru. You're a dollar near, bro. Wow. Dollar menu nearest. All right, so we're supposed to have uh, Matt Powell, analyst for the NPD Group and a contributing writer for Forbes.com, so uh, heads up for that. Um, Let's get to some of this news real quick. If you want to make sure your shoes look just as fresh as when they came out the box, practice safe stunting and go to CrepProtect.com and get your shoes some protection. All right, uh, just a couple of things uh, I want to get into. Um, one of the funniest things, uh, I couldn't get too much information. There's a video. You can check it out if you want to. But I guess Foot Locker now is starting to fire employees who resell uh, shoes out of the store or stock room on Facebook, which you would think would be a long time coming. Um, but So yeah. is, it, is it in the actual Facebook groups or is it just them posting I on guess Facebook? if they – I don't know if it's speci- – <clears throat> Excuse me. Specifically, Facebook. I just think if they catch you uh, selling shoes on social media in general, 
But uh, I, my whole thing is, how do you get commission? Like, you got to hustle it up. You know what I'm saying? No, no, reselling. Like, if you, like, not selling the shoe for oh, retail. Oh, so like they you, bought the, they you bought the, the shoe for retail, then they went out and yeah. flipped it? Yeah, you got a lot of people, like, stunting. Like, like they'll take that. a picture of the stock room as if it's, like, their closet. Oh, and going in the Facebook group. Dirt saying, ball, yeah. Joe, <laughs> Dirt ball. What Somewhere idiot. there's a guy named Dirtball Joe. Like, he's what, like, what he's I do? He's like, damn, I got shot it out on the sneaker box podcast. <laughs> Damn, I man, did, I finally made it. I, I actually know. watched a video of the dude who got fired from Foot Locker. It, like, it was a long, heart. Yeah, that's a, that's a long-ass video. He was video. hurt. He was hurt. Yeah. Because yeah. it was, like, his dream job. And, you know what I'm saying? It's like, the video was, like, confessional style. Like, real world, confessional. Mm. Hurt, yeah. dog. Damn, yeah. you can't handle the truth, man. You got fired, <laughs> man. Dirt ball joke, man. That's me. You crazy. <laughs> All right, so uh, you got a group that wants to boycott, or wants Nike to boycott. Uh, next year's NBA All Star Weekend. Um, in an um, article, <laughs> I know. I heard about that. In an article written by Brendan Doon for Soul Collector. Doon! Uh, <laughs> a women's rights group, Ultraviolet, is asking Nike not to be involved in the 27, <clears throat> 2017 NBA All Star Weekend in Charlotte, North Carolina. The reason for the proposed boycott is North Carolina's House Bill 2. A controversial new law that uh, the group calls one of the worst anti-LGBTQ laws in the country. Uh, According to Footwear News, Ultraviolet says the petition for companies like Nike and Pepsi to withdraw the support from the event already has over 42,000 signatures. Ironically, for Ultraviolet, Nike is not a sponsor of the NBA until the uh, 2017-2018 season. Adidas is still the official sponsor of the 2017 season. Uh, NBA All Star Game. Uh, Adidas isn't out of there yet. No, like they I, don't mean, I love it. The... I love Adidas. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, it's funny that like they're like asking Nike not to sponsor the event, and they're not even the sponsors of the event. Like, mm. Get y'all stuff together, uh, Ultraviolet. Mm-mm. The NBA has also faced criticism over the coming uh, All Star Weekend in Charlotte following the passing of the law. While Nike supported gay rights in the past, there is no sign yet of the brand backing out of the event. At this point, Nike complying seems unlikely given the heavy involvement of Michael Jordan and bringing the game to Charlotte where he is an owner of the Hornets. Well, being an owner of the Hornets and people having Nike contracts versus Nike actually having their name on the jerseys and things like that is two different things. But once you sign that contract, it's really not up to Nike. It's the NBA that will say, well... We're not going to have it here. Yeah, yeah. It's really the NBA. Nike and all those other companies really don't have nothing to do with the NBA overall. It's the NBA that has to pull out. Right, they're gonna Nike has to send them. Yeah, the NBA does the pull up. MPO, <laughs> right. MPLG, bro. They go all in. Yeah, uh, so you know what I'm saying it's one of those things where unless they pull out themselves, Nike has contractually still has to send their shoes to the players or whatever. Right. They break the contract, they lose money. But um, I, I will say, like a lot of people, North Carolina and South Carolina, both tied together, are both beautiful states. But we still have to remember, bro. There is a lot of hate, hate, a hate, lot hate, of hate. racism still down there. That is that is definitely one of those one of those states where I thought you, they banned that. I thought they I thought the uh, governor didn't pass the law. I'm not thinking about a different state. Didn't pass the law to do what? Uh, it was some type of law. It was like some religious free. It was basically some religious law that was basically shrouded to. Basically discriminate. Well, I, I hope they didn't pass it, man, because at the end of the day, bro. Maybe I'm like, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe it's a different state that I'm thinking of. Every person has laws, bro. It doesn't matter what you <clears> love or who you love. At the end of the day, bro, they wake up, they go to sleep, they eat food, they sit on the toilet. Uh, they do all the same things as us, bro. It goes for black, white, gay, straight, trans, whatever. I just never cared that much to tell somebody else what they should or shouldn't do. It doesn't like, really. Right. Because at the end of the day. I, why, do, why do people care so much? That's what, what I'm you, saying. I don't care. Like, you kiss a dude, you kiss a guy. I do not. I got bigger things to listen, worry about. Like, when you go to like, sleep at night, I you go today? to sleep with yourself. It doesn't matter if you're married or not. When you go to bed, you go to bed with yourself. You you know what I'm saying? When you right. wake up, you're waking up. You don't wake another person. And can, can I say this, too? There's a big difference between, because I, 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 uh, I saw a lot of posts where it was like, religion's under attack. No, you're not under attack. People are just not going to stand there and let you just infringe on their rights by having your religious beliefs forced onto their lifestyles. There's a big difference between being attacked and just being told no. A lot of laws are built on religion. <laughs> a lot of I wars, know. A lot of wars Over are built 90%. on religion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of things have been built on yeah. religion, good and bad. So it just gets you know? rough. 
You know, I'm not anti-religious. I'm just, you know, anti-people telling other people what to do. Shout out to Papa Barry White Ranger just Dang. walked in the building. <laughs> we saw How you. you. doing? Uh, <laughs> let me see. What else we got? All right. Let me get to this. Concepts. The store. Uh, appointed a president to help his brand expand internationally. Oh, wow. uh, in an article written by Marco Henry Negrete for uh, Complex. I we guess he wants to, him in a while. I know. He wants to get in on the action. Right. Uh, we serious. have nothing for you, Negrete. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Nicorette. Nicorette. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Complex has been long considered to be one of the best sneaker boutiques in the U.S. Yes. And uh, now the brand is making a major move to take its presence international. Uh, Concepts recently announced that they have appointed – Trey Lucas as his brand president, and he'll be responsible for the brand's expansion overseas. Uh, with Concept's strong history in the sneaker game and Lucas's expertise in strategy and operations, the Boston-based shop looks to expand from a retailer to a global global brand, uh, with the Dubai shop potentially coming as early as this spring or now. Uh, it looks like Concepts is wasting no time with this global initiative. Dang, Dubai, bro. That's, that's, hey, that's money Get right money, there. Get money, Concept. I still I got ain't my, mad at you. I still got my patent leather Concept Wallabies. <laughs> I listen to Wu-Tang every time I got them, bro. That's crazy. Uh, this is funny. A ton of seized Air Jordan sneakers was sold at a police auction. Mm. Police auctions seem to be that spot where you can get some shoes for cheap. Uh, an article written by Riley Jones of Complex. There he is. Riley, don't call me Curry. <laughs> that was I did, the way you think of stuff like i i just man like if you had a screen on your forehead to just show your thoughts like i'm scared i'm why, not even sure why used to piss jingles that's why he's so fast with this, like, oh that's the thing because he'll say something yeah. straight up the cuff and it's like where did that come from i i have been blessed to actually write a, a commercial that was that was nationally seriously like word. Yeah, it's for my mortal enemies now but you know what I'm saying? I, I did write it. <laughs> Say mortal. He was, he was like, like <laughs> he was like bad. Like you vacuums. Mowgli and you share Khan or something like yeah. that. Like remember uh, on right. the Rams Brothers, bad vacuums. <laughs> they suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I hate this jerk. <laughs> I, 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 man, I can only imagine oh, man. spending the whole day with y'all too. I used to get whoopings because of him. Like, I didn't even say it. <laughs> I'm trying to be a better role model. Uh, but she knew he got it from you. Yeah. Uh, a ton of C's there, Jordan, was sold at a police auction. An article written by Riley Jones for Complex. The San Antonio police uh, recently held their C's asset auction that included 42 Air Jordan sneakers. Uh, many of the shoes were grouped into lots of three. However, the full auction list did identify a few pairs individually. Uh, you had the Olympic Air Jordan 6s, the Air Jordan 11 Lab 4s, and the Air Jordan 23s were confirmed to be in the auction. Uh, the auction took place at the VFW Hall, uh, located at 650 VFW Boulevard. Uh, in total, there were 99 items for sale, including TVs, power tools, furniture, and more. I'm going to tell you I, the I brilliant. I got ahead. a pair of shoes from a police auction before. I got Was it the one in Flint? Yeah, I got a pair of playoff eight. Yeah, I'm gonna tell Word. you, yeah. the police are getting smarter. When they, you know, they they used to just seize your cars and they'll sell the cars, right? And they would throw the clothes and shoes away, right? But now they know, you know what I'm saying? They know that shoes are worth money, so they're like, "Bet, yeah, how are we gonna fund this police softball season? Right? We gonna sell all these Jordans, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna be able to get the sweet picnic colored." Jerseys and everything off these, bro. Air Mags. Oh my God, we just got new squad cars. We out here, bro. We out here. They running around in that big tank that uh, they was riding through uh, Ferguson. In. Yeah, but you know you got that one stupid one. What's what is a Dornbacker? Right. That must be a fake. Throw it out, Tommy. Come over here. <laughs> we're gonna start this for me. We're gonna start the bidding at thirty four dollars. <laughs> elephant print. Is that a real elephant? Elephant print. That's crazy. Uh. Adidas CEO said Yeezys made the brand bigger in America. Lies. Uh, in, a, in an article written by Riley Jones for Complex. Don't call uh, me Curry. <laughs> Adidas released its 2015 annual report, which included praise for Kanye West's uh, Yeezy collaboration, saying the sneakers created unprecedented brand momentum. Uh, in a recap of Adidas Group CEO Herbert Hainer's analyst call, he said the collaboration with Kanye has elevated our brand perception in the U.S. and beyond. And that the shoe is making Adidas stand for something unique. 
He also added that the brand is forecasting double-figure growth in 2016. Furthermore, Hayner says that Adidas will continue to push Yeezy Boost releases to further build off the momentum they created here in the States. In the fourth quarter of 2015, Adidas numbers jumped by 15% with $4.5 billion in sales, including 12% growth in North America but, alone. But what were those companies that leaped them? Yes. Yeah. That's true. And didn't Pharrell outsell Kanye? Yes. But see, once again, perception is reality. Hmm. You know, height versus substance. Kanye was like, I need you to stroke my ego. You haven't uh, stroked my ego all day. But, <laughs> Why don't you say something good about me? You got to remember that Kanye did say that him and Don C made Jordan's cool. Truth. Why That's don't you never story. tell me I'm beautiful anymore? Because you know people weren't wearing Jordans when. I would Kanye. say, I've. Yeah, speaking of <laughs> Kanye, uh, Kanye said Adidas is making a million pairs of Yeezy Boost this year. Wow. Yes. Okay. An article written by Marco Henry Negrete. He really wants to get in on his action. I see you, my Negrete. Uh, fuck, <laughs> for comp. <laughs> that was the biggest good, complaint. That was a good play on words. That, that was, was really a good play. Great. That was Shaq. I'm impressed. <laughs> that was Shaq and the fool right there. <laughs> I am impressed. Uh, the biggest complaint from fans of the Adidas Yeezy Boost has been the lack of quantities made to match demand. Uh, Kanye West addressed this on Twitter recently. He tweeted, Ed Adidas is making a million Yeezys this year, opening up new factories. Okay. Uh, this announcement took place. You actually, they probably going to open up more factories than Yeezys. Uh, this announcement took place during what Kanye referred to as a stream of consciousness and Twitter poetry. Um, that sounds Kanye ish. It, it could be a, a million Yeezys, but it could be a million, like, small releases of Yeezys. You there know you what I'm saying? Or it could be multiple <clears throat> colors. Right. Uh, I did see, like, that, that one, uh, them striped Yeezys that's coming the out. 550s. Yeah, and then it's, like, some Volt looking colorways, I think, coming out and stuff like that. Right. But, um, you know, the one thing I will say, man, no matter what, um, what Kanye has done to create demand for clothing and sneakers. Is unparalleled, you know what I'm saying? That feel like, I feel like Kobe Bryant shirt sold like 15 million shirts or some ridiculous stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. He's made of hype. one tweet. He's made hype for a celebrity to release something, and they buy that celebrity stuff. Like the Pusha T um, Adidas or whatever, bro. Mm-hmm. I never would think that Pusha T shoes would be Those worth Those Pusha T was nice. The last they of the nice. black joints. But they're not six, seven hundred dollars. No, no, no. Push, no. push always had like high quality stuff, even with the play clothes. Yeah, he did. He did the play clothes joint. Like, but what I, what I'm saying is, what Kanye started off doing because it was celebrities that were releasing shoes, and before Kanye, the only person shoes that was really worth tens and twenties of thousands of dollars and things like that was Eminem. Right. He was yeah. one of the only ones like that really dropped one, but. Eminem also only dropped so like, many hundreds yeah, like of pairs. Yeah, like 10 pairs, right. Yeah, so, you know what I'm saying? I, for, I, for, can, I can't get $10,000 from my s dots. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you might be able to I get, forgot about those. You might be able to get 10,000 dongs. That's uh, about yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> Ten gonna come in here with a get, handful uh, of them. What like, can right. I get with 10,000 dongs? <laughs> right. Oh, no more Yankee. Get out of here, 10. Yankee. 10. The donga need food. Oh, 10. God damn it. I can't rock my, uh, my, my Dame Dash Pro Kids and... <laughs> <laughs> my, my vocal Reeboks. Let's get the Brandon real quick. <laughs> but your G Unit Reeboks might be worth something, bro. <laughs> oh, I heard. Yeah. You heard him said. <laughs> yeah. More news. Oh, matter of fact, this is a segue to what my man's just said down under here, son. What's that? Oh, John, John Wexler. John okay. Wexler. All right, hold on, Brandon. We'll get to you in one second. All right. Adidas John Wexler explains why the Yeezy Boosts are so limited. This might have been the most. <clears throat> the only thing I could think of more egregious before I read this. Uh, is when the GM of the Cavaliers said LeBron doesn't run his team. It was mm-hmm. like, come on, bro. We we know he does. Let's, and then he unfollowed him. On yeah, I know. <laughs> That's basically what Shut happened. Shut up and take this time out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in an article written by Riley Jones for Complex. Damn, Don't Riley. call me Curry. Uh, Adidas Global Director of Entertainment and Influencer <laughs> and Influencer Marketing, John Wexler. I swear that's a made-up job title. Uh, stop by, <laughs> stop by Power 105.1's The Breakfast Club one morning to talk about all things Adidas with DJ Envy, Charlemagne, and Angela Yee. Uh, topics covered included the recent success of the NMD launch, the brand's collaborations with artists like Pharrell and Big Sean, and of course, Yeezy Boost. Uh, when asked about the Yeezy Boost limited avail- <coughs> availability, Wexler explained that it's not quite as cut and dry as it might appear to an outsider. Allegedly, Due to the Yeezy sneakers' use of complex technologies like Boost and Prime Knit, 
there's only so many pairs that can be produced in, sh- in such a short time frame. Bullshit. <laughs> he explained. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, there, that's why he was like, short. <laughs> like, what are you that's that bad vacuum. Uh, it takes <laughs> it takes X amount of time to sell those sneakers together, and we can only get so much of this boost material from NASA. <laughs> We're cleaning out his throat right now. <laughs> Open wide, bro. Get that get that Vegas out of there. Oh, <laughs> Horrible Open, people. Open wide, Negri. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right, we're good now. He's good. I hate y'all in the greets. Uh, there's a silver lining, however. Wexler said it's the brand's goal to have more output of not only the Easy Boost, but of all the sneakers. All right, here's why this is bullshit. Because they put Boost in a lot of other shoes, and they have no problem making large quantities of those. Like and, the tubulars, all of that stuff? Yeah, yeah. the prime. Like, no, pl- show me a picture of these people just hand-sewing some Yeezys together. Like, please, please it's- show me this. <laughs> I would love like, to see this. Like, it's only so they, many Salvation Armies where there's old do, sweaters that it, look like the boost. You know, he can look, man. Like, are can, they really just like? I would rather him not up, even make an explanation. They like, yeah, we got to rip up uh, fifty-five styrofoam cups per shoe. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 it's like, don't please do not look, man. Sometimes not saying anything is better than saying something, man. It's it's. Just say that, man. I, there's no way you can tell me that the reason that y'all make the, or the reason that you don't make. When are easy. you going to put out more Yeezy boots? We're going to soon. Yeah, look You've at been that. saying that forever. Look what I just did, bro. And like I said, like don't, let's be real. The reason you don't make so many Yeezy boots is because once you do, the demand goes down, and then you know there goes your. I got to hire an influencing mar- uh, marketing person. That's what I need to hire. <sighs> I, man, that that kind of just annoyed me when I read it. Like, man, shut the hell up, John. It's a great Wexler. title. Uh, all right, let's get to Brandon real quick, and then we get to Matt Powell. Brandon. What's up, guys? How y'all doing? All right. Hey, man, I just wanted to call and talk to you guys about a few things. Um, one thing, Juan, what's going on? Just so you know, good, my wife hates, hates the podcast because I walk around this house all day, and they'll be talking between my wife and my daughter, and I'll just interrupt and be like, prep tech. I put that shit on everything. <laughs> <laughs> you my guy, just, bro. That's hilarious. I, That's funny. I just walk away, and the wife is like, what the fuck is this? What the hell is this? That's why like you just it, start it, an it, argument it, and walk out the room like that. Uh, That's the best what? way to end an argument. Just do like they did at Malcolm X. Just be like, Crip Attack, get your hands in my pocket. And then just walk oh, out. Oh, my God, bro. Yeah. So she she is already like I don't want to listen to that podcast I don't want to hear that shit I can't even <laughs> say the word crap anymore around her Wow you're, she you're, just on time out. Out <laughs> <laughs> you're on time out bro Wow so, the Sneaker Box uh, Podcast yeah. breaking up marriages one marriage at a time All Right thanks bro yeah. That's <laughs> he need a bad that, vacuum that shit is awesome Yeah you need a bad uh, vacuum he, he, My ten year old just thinks it's the funniest thing though she just laughs. Good. She's good. 10. Everything is funny. Any, anytime I can influence the kids, that's a good thing. <laughs> right. Everything 10 there is funny. At least, you yeah. know, at least you know their shoes will never be dirty. Right. Hey, at, awesome. least, at least you're not running around the house screaming dong. <laughs> oh. Yeah. oh, no more Yankee, my wanky. Get out of here, 10. No longer need food. No, 10. Bad 10. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we keep them chained up like Igor out. now in the corner. <laughs> we had Tim chained up in the corner of the studio. Yeah, he's the man in the iron mask now. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> we feed him through a straw. He's literally sitting in the corner on all fours. He, he really like slurps applesauce through oh, a straw, bro. God, yeah. no. he's oh. a bow. He's our new reek. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no! Oh, oh no! Oh my god! <laughs> He doesn't want to leave the studio like, come on, Tan, we can escape. No, hey, no, 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 no. My name is Reek. I'm My not Tan anymore. <laughs> he's, a, oh, he's, over here, uh, he's over here chopping up Yeezy Boost. Oh, yeah, he, yeah, he's, yeah, he's making up Yeezy Boost. He's had some oh, Yeezy Boost. We're trying, to get more, we're trying to get more Yeezy Boost out to the community. Hey, yeah. so what's your question, Brandon? Oh. <laughs> no. Please don't. Please don't. Forget them Yeezys. Oh. What's, your, um, what's your question, bro? So I was going to ask you guys, because I'm an old school cat. I've been doing this since 94 or whatnot. And I noticed that this year is a pretty big year when it comes to, like, Nike retros, mm-hmm. as far as they're really celebrating that ni- mid-90s 
Nike basketball line, you know, with some more up tempos and, and, you know, the 12s and they're bringing the Griffies back and all that stuff. And I was just wondering what, since that was such probably the biggest years in, in shoes, what are releases are you guys like excited about this year that you're really looking forward to? Uh, that I'm looking forward to. Uh, I could tell you two off the bat. Well, one has already happened. Uh, and that's the, the, well, the soul collector ish penny twos. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to the flu, uh, the bread twelves. Cause that was my first air Jordan ever. So it just has sentimental value for me. And the, yeah. uh, the retro, the third retro I'm looking forward to. I know everybody's going to say the space Jams, but me is the, uh, OG true blue, uh, threes that are going to come out with. Um, I think oh, uh, Thanksgiving, yeah. uh, yeah. and I'm looking, I'm looking forward to the bad ones too, because I wasn't a big fan of the bad ones or the bread ones, whatever, uh, that came out in 2013. What about the flu games? He said that yeah. the bread toys. I'm just watching you, bro. Let's see. Uh, what about the, what about the, the flu uh, game one? The KD9. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, like the, uh, the, we, the we excited about those K spell chokes for the OKC. Uh-huh, I'm excited uh-huh, for those. Uh-huh. Uh, but the oh, ones though, oh, like in 2013, like they were cut lower, and then the red was darker, so it didn't pop as much as the cherry red on the um, mm-hmm. OG. So I'm kind of excited for that uh, Olympic foam too. That, the Olympic yes. foam, and I, I want to see the uh, the KD9 in real life. Ooh, you I like that. I like that KD9. Yeah. I like the way yeah. it looks. It, I, it seems like. It seems like uh, Durant was like, you know what? I liked what was on his shoe. I liked yeah. what was on his shoe. I liked his soul. Bring it all together, man. It looks like he just took like a Damian Lillard Adidas shoe and just made it better. And sometimes and you got to do that, bro. <laughs> I actually want yeah. that. I like, I like that, that new uh, zoom on there. That oh, self lacing. Yes. Oh, and uh, any Olympic uh, uh, tempos. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. Scott, yeah. the Scott oh. T. Pips. And yeah. the, uh, what's the yeah. name? Even yeah. on the red ones are my favorite. I actually want that auto lacing shoe, too, dog. That, of course yeah. you do, bro. Of course you do. All right, bro. Thanks for calling in, though. You're a great friend, hey, Brandon. Guys, I got one more. I got one more question for you guys. What's that? Um, last week I didn't win the grand prize. Yeah. I heard my story got bumped out. One was like, ah, oh, he didn't get the number. Yeah. But uh, I was wondering, do I still get that consolation prize? Yes, with the you wipes do. And the spray. Yeah. yeah I, as a matter right, of fact, cool. I was going to call everybody this week. Yeah, you do get the consolation prize of the wipes and spray. Well, that is awesome, guys. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate she's it. She's really going to hate us now. Winner, she's winner. Gonna see the crap. Because you're really going to be putting that shit on everything. Yeah. Right. Matter of <laughs> fact, make a, make a video just spraying it in the house and tag us in it, bro. Yes. <laughs> Chasing on, your wife you with the spray. I, I, Put it on everything. I'll do that on Instagram. I'll just wipe her face with the wipes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Become insta famous. <laughs> oh man! All right, be cool, bro. Get you a vacuum. Bro. Why do I feel like we're gonna be like subpoenaed to his divorce hearing? Yikes! Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, so, like I said, we have Matt Powell, uh, one of the twenty people to follow according to Complex, uh, analyst for the NPD Group and a contributing writer for Forbes. dot com. Matt, what's up? How you guys doing? All right, how you doing? Great, thanks. Great, great to be on. Yes. Uh, in case you don't know, I would tell anybody this before we get into this uh, discussion. Uh, follow him on Twitter. Like I, I told him yesterday, I call him the king of quips because he <laughs> definitely has a way of just ending a conversation with people. Like he just drops the mic on them. So it's it's, uh, it's <laughs> kinda, definitely entertaining. Norm Kelly ish. Yeah, because he knows what he's Kelly-ish. talking about, and he has a way with words, and it's like, wow, okay. <laughs> So he's the opposite of you. Ooh, man. Turn his mic off. Uh, <laughs> Bad vacuum. I know, right? <laughs> Get in the corner with 10. That's what the name of the show yeah. going to be, I guess. Bad vacuum. Bad vacuum. <laughs> All right, Matt. So if you could, for the people oh, wow. for the people that don't know, can you give us a, you know, a little bit of your background? Sure. Well, I was a retailer for uh, 30 years. Um, the last 10, I was in the sports uh, business. And I uh, started a consulting business uh, around 2001 um, where I was doing research for uh, the stock market on the industry, and I've been basically doing that job ever since. So uh, my 16th year of, uh, of doing research. Right. Um, the coolest job I had at retail, uh, I always like to tell the story, is uh, I worked for a, a dot-com uh, in Chicago that was started by Michael Jordan, uh, John Elway, and Wayne Gretzky. Wow, uh, that's, and, the, uh, that's almost a cartoon. Meet. Minus uh, that's like the Bo trinity Jackson. of yeah. like minus athletes, Bo right Jackson. there. Exactly. So I got to meet those guys and work with them. We mostly saw Elway. We we didn't see much uh, that much of Jordan. He was still pretty hot back then. We had to, you know, whenever if he came around the offices, we had to sneak him in the back door and so forth. So wow, um, 
Yeah, but pretty cool. Right. So did, is, did his jeans ever get caught in the door when you snuck him through the back door? No. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did, he, did he walk in like, are you ready? All right. Yeah, are you guys ready? <laughs> um, okay, so like, how weird is it that like now you become like one of the most respected voices in the sneaker industry? Well, that's, that's very nice. I, you know, I just, uh, I'm a student of the game. Uh, I love talking about it, and uh, uh, it's great to get paid to do that and be called an expert and uh, get to meet with all the major brands and retailers in the space. Uh, it's, it's, I'm having a lot of fun. That's what's up. It sounds amazing. So, uh, okay, so to you, like, what makes the sneaker, uh, I guess, consumer demographic, like, unique from, like, other demographics? Well, I think it's younger. Uh, it's certainly more male. Uh, it's very diverse ethnically, um, uh, and and I, and I think one of the defining characteristics is how passionate the uh, the sneaker collectors are and sneakerheads in general are about uh, about the game and what's happening and uh, and their knowledge. Uh, I'm constantly being asked about shoes I've never even heard of. So right. uh, it, you know the depth of the depth of knowledge that. Uh, your average sneakerhead has today is just remarkable. I remember talking to you, you were saying that like over the past 30 years, I think at the worst, um, there was like 0% growth, but it didn't necessarily go down. It just didn't grow that year. Like, is there any, That's right. is there any other trend that is like followed that same trajectory in the last 30 years? Well, you probably uh, cell phones, uh, computers, but not a whole, there are not a whole lot of categories where you can talk about constant growth like that. No. Mm. Wow. All right. Um, I think, you know, we, we got quite the conversation yesterday, but one of the things that came up, um, we've had discussions on the show about the athlete versus the, uh, I guess, the music artist. The celebrity. Yeah, and like how um, nowadays it seems like the music artists have just as much influence as the athletes. Do you buy into that or No. Well, I, I don't. I, w- I wouldn't say they have as much influence in terms of actual sales. Um, certainly, brand exposure is 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 important with using celebrities. Um, but when you look at you look at athletes like LeBron and KD and the kind of pairs that they move, um, no no celebrities uh, is moving that kind of units. But certainly, creating a lot of hype for the brand. Um, uh, no no question that uh, celebrities have had an impact on the industry. Now, if if they were able to have as much exposure, because like the average NBA player is on TV what, every other day, every two Basically, to three days. Yeah. Uh, somebody yeah. like Pharrell or Kanye only has like a concert tour once or twice a year. Right. So you don't get to see them like that. And there's also no video of it constantly. Right. So if they were able to push out the same amount of pairs, and on top of that, they were able to be on something like uh, how Pharrell's on The Voice. Right. Or if Kanye was able to get on a, a reality TV show on a on a regular basis, do you think that they would be able to push the same amount of sales as the athlete A versus celebrity right. B or whatever? Yeah, I, you know, I don't think it's an issue of exposure. Frankly, I I, I think the artists I, I I have alerts set up for all the brands, and I, I probably get more hits on uh, uh, on Kanye and Pharrell than I do on any, any athlete. So okay. um, I think I think they get plenty of exposure, although not necessarily on uh, on Sports Center, but. Um, uh, my, my sense is, I mean, if we go back in the history of, of the industry, we go back to one of the original collaboration shoes, uh, the S. Doc Carter product with Reebok back in the day. Um, that shoe just evaporated at retail when it first came out. And and Reebok made a lot more pairs. You know, they maybe they made 1,000 pairs to start, and then they made 50,000 pairs. Um, when they got greedy and tried to get it to half a million pairs, it blew up the market. And, um, and the colorways and, are ugly. Yeah, well, that didn't help, right? But right. Uh, uh, and the same thing with with Fifty Cent when they did the shoe with him, and they just they made way more shoes than the the the, the consumers had appetite for. Um, and I think, look, part of what makes these artists' shoes so desirable is that they're really made in very very small runs. And right. and so uh, if I have a pair of you know Ronnie's shoe or Pharrell shoe or or or, or Rihanna shoe, um, I know that I'm one of a very small number of people, and that makes that really cool. If right. if there's 10 million pairs of them out there, I think everybody says ho hum. I'm I, you know I've seen that. I'm over it. Right. But we just read a story about John Wexler and how he explained why the Yeezy boosts are so limited 
do you uh do you buy into his uh reasoning or do you apply what you just said to the Yeezys as well? Well, what was his reasoning that he gave? Uh basically he tried to say it's not enough uh materials uh to make the Yeezys. I don't really uh, buy into they that. They ran out of sweaters <laughs> in the in the plenty um, of, there's plenty of material out there. No. No no worries. They can make as many pairs as they want to. So basically, I mean, so basically, it goes in line with what you just said that basically, if they were to make more, the demand would go down. Exactly. You know, I think if you Jordan is really brand Jordan here is really the 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 master at, at doing this, and you know they've made a a two and a half billion dollar business on on shoes that nobody can get enough of. Um, and the, so every year they learn. Okay, we can add another ten percent to this shoe. We got to we got to pull back on that one. Um, we're going to distribute these shoes differently, and so forth. Uh, and they've been able to have a sustainable growth business over time. Um, but it's taken you know decades to get to where they are. This is not something you move to move to over a, over the course of a couple of months. Right. So, do you see anybody challenging Jordan's status at the top of the mountain, or did Jeezy really jump over the jump, man? And uh, nobody's going to jump over the jump, man. Um, uh, and not just because he's my old boss, but I actually said, I tweeted this out. and I really believe this firmly. If, if, if MJ came up right now, he wouldn't be MJ. Okay. It, it, it's a different world. It was a different time. Uh, the NBA was in ascension after really being, uh, you know, the bad boy league for a long time. Uh, ESPN was just coming on. Uh, so you can see the highlights every night. Little to no um, social media. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And so it was much more contained. And then, and, and look, he was he it was a fabulous, fabulous athlete. But today's world, there's so much exposure, and there's so much, so many more athletes, and so many more things to pull our attention. I think if he came up right now, he would he would not have the kind of uh, the kind of following that he did uh, back in the day. I, right. I totally agree with that. I, yeah, I kind of agree probably, with that. They probably would expose like the gambling thing that he had. Right. Social you know. media would probably yeah. definitely yeah. Would have Mark yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I but think he about he had a great it. team though. Michael Jordan had a great team, unlike yes, a did. lot of other people. He had an amazing team. Yeah. Like even yes, like did. uh even with his father being killed and the whole gambling controversy, nothing yep. really came out of it. You know what I'm saying? Nope. Like that. Like it 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 isn't like how they made the OJ movie. They're not about to make the Michael Jordan's father's movie or anything like that. Yeah. They but, really his team really covered things up, and he still has an amazing team. And then day. at the time, you know. It wasn't that many superstars, so people didn't really care. He was like a god. Do you know what there right. was? There was superstars, but he was like really the one of the only superstars on Nike until Penny Hardaway and them came along. Right. Because you had yep, Dominique yep. Wilkins who could jump out the gym just like him. You had Charles Barkley, but Charles Barkley couldn't talk. Right. So it was right. real hard to <laughs> market and advertise somebody who with a speech impediment. Right. You know, so you, yep, you did. Yep. Almost every team had a superstar. Clyde Drexler from Portland, then when he went to Houston. You had Akeem Olajuwon. Right. Um, you had Sean Kipp and Gary Payton in '96. You had yep. you had almost one superstar on every team. It's just that the exposure on the superstars is different. Like who's going to get up and watch a Seattle SuperSonics team? Right. You right. know, we weren't. Right. We didn't get the team in the Midwest. We would almost always get Chicago, Indiana, right. um, yo, Cleveland. Your conference. Right. Yeah, you got your yeah, whole. Yeah. So, so Matt, since we're on this subject, do you think? The like, cause now that I'm thinking about, it, I just saw a documentary in Babe Ruth. Do you think because of all the exposure that we kind of created the death of a legend? Because I think what creates a legend is when we try to fill in those blanks. Uh, we don't have all that access to that particular person. So do you now? Do you think that we can still have those legendary figures in sports? I think it's a different world today. I, I think, we're, for, first of all, it's 24-7. We're seeing these people all the time. Right. Uh, and, and so it, it's just a different kind of relationship. Uh, you're, you're right. The mystique around uh, Jordan, uh, the mystique, mystique around Babe Ruth uh, back in the day. Right. Uh, Mickey Mantle. You know, Jack, Jackie Robinson. I mean, we didn't know these people well. We we, we only viewed them from afar. And, and so uh, I think there was a totally different kind of relationship with those athletes. Yogi Berra has his own book of quotes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, right. And I was like, and I was like LeBron's I'll hairline. Story. I'll tell you a funny story. I was in uh, I was in Portland, Oregon, making a presentation to uh, to Adidas, and um, my wife was with me, and we went out to dinner in this little French restaurant, and we're finishing up the meal, and this young man comes over to me and says, "Are you Matt Powell?" Wow. I'm like, holy smokes! 
Wow. And it turns out he, 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 I said, how did you know me? He says, Twitter. And I'm like, no, I have no place to hide anymore. Nah, you got to be you very don't. careful. You don't. <laughs> you are what we call a hood famous. All right. <laughs> matter, of, matter of fact, even me and Caesar, we were at, we were in Toronto, and yes. this guy walked up to me and him in Toronto, and we're like, "Are y'all the sneaker box guys?" Yes, I love the show. We're yeah. Like, Whoa. yeah. And my first, <laughs> my first instinct was to punch him in the gut and tell Caesar run right, and I run left. Yeah, I just, you know, we from Detroit. I, so. I knew it was the feds. I just knew yeah. it. Like Caesar, it's over with, bro. Like, I didn't pay my taxes yet. Like you know, I'm out. They know so. you've been. They know you've been smuggling illegal pillows through your shoes, bro. So I knew <laughs> that it was going to catch exactly. up to us. So, but you know, the guy was like a fan, and it's happened to us a couple times where, yeah. you know, now seriously, if you do want to kind of get known or get famous, you can use social media as an outlet. You just got to know what to post, and you got to have good stuff. But if you do, exactly, you're good. What um, what's your thoughts? We talked about this too yesterday. Um, what are your thoughts so about? So y'all were just this? having a conversation without us. Man, listen, I'm gonna tell. You, listen, I'm gonna tell you right now. Thanks a lot, Matt. There were so many things on my bucket list. Talking, having a conversation with Matt Powell was one of them. Drop a bad vacuum oh, for Caesar. Because <laughs> well, Caesar sucks. No, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, Matt Powell was like, I have to talk to Matt Powell. Like, this is like the highlight of my podcasting experience right now. Uh, uh, whatever. Very, very nice. That's like, that. that's going to be like DJ's Clues bomb. The bad I'm, uh, So, what's your thoughts about the resale market? Like, um, do you think the bubble is burst or bursting? Yeah, I do. I think that I think that Nike's gone out of their way to try to uh, reduce the amount of people who are flipping. I I think you have to think about the resale market and the collecting market on, on really two two levels. It's always been about people who are passionate about the shoes, who love the shoes, collected them, remembered them from when they when they were young. And, and that business is legit, and 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 uh, you want to nurture that. You want to nurture that love of, of the shoes. Right. Then there's another layer that's really come on because of the Internet of people who are just flipping shoes for profit and kids who are waiting in line, paying other kids to wait in line um, and, and selling the shoe before they even get the shoe, uh, mm-hmm. uh, flipping it on, on eBay uh, that day for triple time, times uh, what, what the street value was or the retail value was. And, and I think Nike feels that those folks are exploiting um, the, the people who are really in love with the product, the, the fans, uh, uh, the collectors. And so I think Nike has consciously gone into the marketplace and said, we're going to put more pairs of these des- highly desirable shoes out there uh, in an effort to break the resale market by making the resale prices deflate. Right. Uh, and I think we're starting to see that happening already. You know what's weird? I, it's funny, like, when people were complaining that there weren't enough shoes, and now there's shoes sitting on the shelves, and they're complaining about it. And I had, I actually had people say that they, like, it's like they didn't want the shoe once they realized that the shoes weren't, like, as sought after as other shoes. And it's like, sure. well, like- that, goes, that goes back to what I was saying about the uh, Doc Carter and, uh, and the situation for Adidas today is it, it, the worst thing that could happen to them is, is, is that uh, a Yeezy is sitting on the shelf someplace. Um, right. That would be a very, very bad thing. So, be hurt. Um, and, and, but I, you're right. Everybody, there's, there certainly is a Goldilocks syndrome out there. They want it to be just right. I, I want to get my pair and I don't want there to be any more out there for anybody else. Right. Well, the one thing I do know for sure too is even if the shoe does resell, it's only it only can go so high. Right. Exactly. So the, if the exactly. kid in line, he pays two hundred retail for it, he sells it for two seventy five. The other kid takes it for two seventy five because he knows the guy around the corner. I pay three fifty. The guy for three fifty ends up finagling and he's selling it for four fifteen. Sooner yep. or later, the price is going to drop because it's a "what have you done for me lately" type of market. Right. So as soon as that shoe gets to like four fifteen. Now that same shoe's coming out, but now it has like a gold bar on it, like the wings and, yeah. you know, paint yeah. comes off of it. So that price drops on that shoe because that shoe isn't the loved one no more. And yep. then the other shoe skyrockets. So now you're stuck with a shoe you paid for for 415 and the word and the best you can do is sell it for 230 240 right? just to try and get some money. Right. So I, I think that's where they're killing off the market as well is these people aren't even wearing the shoes anymore. Like that's I say, right. the love for the shoes they're just trying to get money, and the next guy's trying to get money, and the next guy's trying to get money, and then that shoe right. just ends up collecting dust because now he can't get it off. Right. Yeah. Uh, um. Enough yep. about Nike, though. Um. What a, What brands do you see uh, causing some turbulence in 2016 and uh, potentially giving Nike a run for his money? Well, I think I, I would say I think Adidas uh, has really uh, made a massive turnaround in the marketplace. Um, 
you know, they they went through four or five years of really struggling, and it's really scuffling here in the United States. And, and they moved almost 200 people from Germany to the United States so that they, their marketing people and their product people could really get immersed into what the U.S. market wanted. Mm-hmm. And we're starting to see the fruits of that uh, of, of that labor now, um, products like uh, NMD and, and, and Flux and, and uh uh, tubular and so forth. They're, they they really have got a lot of the product right, and they they're probably going to be the brand of the year. If I if I had to give out the award right now, I'd give them the award. Right. Um, next brand, uh, Un Under Armour, uh, continues to to do really well. They're moving away from making what I would call gym shoes to making much more what I would call street shoes. Um, and, uh, you know, I think Curry's a big piece of that. Um, I saw their sportswear line that will be out in a very limited way this fall, and uh, I think they're, they're spot on with what they're doing. So I think the future is very bright. But as we said yesterday, the sneaker business is really, really good, and every brand ought to be winning right now, um, and, uh, and almost everybody is. So it's, this, is a, this is the golden age of the sneaker business. Right. I mean, it's funny uh, hearing people talk, you know, about Under Armour and laughing at them. But like I said, at one point, Nike was Under Armour back in the early 80s. Or, yep. uh, and late they 70s. found a lovable person <laughs> with, there with you great go. personality. <laughs> yep. So uh, I got one more question for you, then we're going to let you go. Um, All right. Uh, the, the logos on the, uh, the ads on the jerseys. Oh, my yep. God. Like, go, like I, we, we discussed this at length yesterday um, somewhat. Um I don't necessarily agree with it. I just think it's, I think it's just, I, I, like I told you yesterday, at some point, where is the limit? Like, I know they're trying to make more money, but, like, how far do you go? They already got the TV contract. Yeah. Yep. So, like, what are your thoughts about the jersey? Do you think it? Uh, you think people will be turned off on it so much that they'll stop buying it? You know, I really don't. I think if we look to Europe and what's happened over there, uh, the, the European fans have embraced the soccer jerseys where you don't even have a team team name on some of these jerseys right. now. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think there will be some pushback in the beginning. But here was an example that I used, and, and I think it's an important lesson. When, when Reebok handed off the NFL contract to Nike, Almost everybody went out and bought a new Nike football jersey because they wanted to have the same one that their their player on the field had. They right. didn't want to have that vector on there anymore. They wanted to have the swoosh. Um, and I think if if their favorite player has a has a Coca Cola ad on his uh, on his jersey, they're going to want to have that Coca Cola ad. Right. My favorite my favorite athlete is Messi, and I don't care what's on the jersey as long as the Messi <laughs> yeah, name exactly. is on the back. Exactly. You know, I'm going to give you an analogy and you tell me if I'm wrong, but like where I mean as far as limit. Okay, Michael Jackson, yep. right? Michael Jackson had a big nose back in the day. We all agree on that. Yep. He had a couple surgeries, you know, to make his nose smaller, and we was cool with that. So are you saying that you're going to have surgery to make your feet smaller? Ha-ha, you funny. But no. <laughs> so, like, we was cool with that. But then he kept having surgeries, you know, and it's just yep. like it got to a point where it's like, okay, Mike, you know, relax with the surgeries. <laughs> And that's what I think with the with the NBA is like okay like I understand you doing the, some of the things to make more revenue, but now putting the ads in the jerseys it seems like having too many surgeries. So but don't like, never forget one thing: soccer is the greatest sport and the biggest sport <laughs> in the whole world. <laughs> and if they put true. a Snapchat logo on D'Angelo Russell's jersey, I'm buying it. But does that <laughs> analogy fit to you or no? Yeah, you know, one of, well, one of the things we didn't talk about yesterday, and I'm I'm convinced of this. I think the, we're going to see sleeve jerseys out there because that gives them much more room to put the ads on. God, I hope not. I hope uh-huh. not. Let's pray that they we're don't. We're going to watch Le- LeBron James look like a buffoon with a ripped yeah. sleeve. Uh-huh. Like male cheerleaders. Uh-huh. All right, Matt, I wish we had more time, man. But I definitely Glad appreciate you coming on the show, man, and uh, giving us some of your time. You are definitely one of the greatest interviews we ever had. Yeah, honestly. Well, thank you. A lot of fun. I really appreciate the uh, opportunity. Uh and uh, have me back on sometime. Yes, sir. We will. All right, guys. Maybe you can Thank come you. back for uh, number 100. Yes. All right. Good. Sounds good. good. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Yep. All right. Crepitech. I put that shit on everything. Go to crepitech.com and get your shoes some protection. Are you stupid or something? I'm as stupid as a stupid does. All right. All right. <laughs> I want to get to this. This has been on. Our, That's this, my favorite part of the show. This has been on the docket for like the longest. Uh, the John docket. Wall. You can't spell docket. D o c k e t. Not spell dong. <laughs> <laughs> Ten bark twice. Uh, oh no more Yankee, my wanky. Uh, shut up, Rick. The dongo <laughs> need food. <laughs> right. <laughs>
Ten in here. I called him by his human name. Ten in here looking like uh, Quasimodo. Oh man. Uh, John Wall turned down a seven point five million dollar deal with Adidas because he wanted that James Harden money. I can tell you. Everybody now. knows you never go full retail. Well, yeah, exactly. John Wall did. <laughs> An article written by Riley Johnson Complex. Don't call me Curry. Uh, John Wall became a sneaker free agent before the start of this current uh, NBA season after a five year tenure that started with Reebok and concluded with Adidas. Details on the dissolution between Wall and Adidas has been pretty hard to come by, but now thanks to the vertical. Uh, we're hearing or we're learning more about what happened behind the scenes. It turns out that Adidas wanted Wall to stick around, going as far as to offer the three-time NBA All-Star $7.5 million per year deal uh, that would include more signature sneakers and apparel. According to the vertical, Wall declined the offer because he wanted James Harden money, mm-hmm. which would have been closer to double what the brand had offered. Uh, Wall signed his original deal with Reebok in 2010, uh, for $2.5 million a year and eventually moved to Adidas after Reebok shifted focus from his basketball division. Both, yeah. oh, go uh, ahead, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Both lines produced two signature sneakers each, and the third was lined up with Adidas before he left. Now it's rumored that Wall's new agent, Rich Paul, LeBron's right-hand man, will mm-hmm. likely push for a deal with Nike or Jordan brand. Uh, so, um, yeah. I mean, they were stupid to give James Harden James Harden money. So. Yeah. Uh, you know the one thing that they remind me of—they remind me of the old Supersonics when they first had drafted Durant. Uh-huh. Like they just can't get right. Like they got Bill, yeah. but Bill keeps having like little injuries here and there. They got Nene, and to me, Nene has always been like the best average power forward to ever play the game. The best average, yeah, player. because he <laughs> some nights he shows up, some nights he doesn't. Ever since he took his last name and just made his name Nene. He has not been the same, bro. But I, I feel like uh, the one thing that John Wall needs to do in order to get that money that he wants, John Wall needs to probably go to another team. He needs to go to a bigger market. Because even though D.C. is, you know, of course, D.C., whatever, blah, blah, right. blah. They still don't get enough TV time. He doesn't get enough exposure. But um, you get TV time based on how good you are. Like, Golden State wasn't getting a lot of TV time until they started winning. Uh, half and half. Uh, you, you know, they would have Golden State on. Golden State's always had like good next players year. on their team. Next year, I guarantee you, going to be more you know took, Minnesota Timberwolves games on TV. You know what took uh, John Wall's money? That shot Derrick Rose hit in the playoffs last year. <laughs> <laughs> when he got lifted up with the straight face. Uh, oh, man. That was funny. Yeah, he lifted him up like <laughs> yeah, he was. I, and I just think John Wall can always get better. He's still a pretty young guy. He can yeah, always he still get got better. time. He got better defense. Than better luck next year, John, because Nike ain't going to give you nothing either, and you're not going to be in any commercials. Can, yeah. Keep going. Uh, this is the story of the week right here. Everybody, You know what's funny? Because everybody's hitting on my timeline like, man, when are y'all going to talk about this? Uh, Supply PDX was busted with over 1,600 pairs of fake sneakers. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, man. An article written by Riley Jones for Complex. Don't damn, call Riley. me Curry. Damn. Riley is killing it, man. Brandon Dune, you got to step your game up, man. Uh, Courtney the Coin Six. IRS and Homeland Security. Damn. Investigation agents uh, searched James Pepion's uh, Happy Valley, Oregon home and seized thousands of counterfeit sneakers, mm. including 1,560 pairs of Nikes. 40 pairs of Adidas, and seven, seven, ASIC sneakers. Only seven. Uh, James operated GetSupply.com, also known as Supply PDX, uh, from his home since May 2009. And investigators say he racked up $2,615,988 in PayPal sales during that time. I don't know what the fees were. <laughs> like it's probably thirty yeah. percent. We of were that. just talking about those PayPal yeah, fees PayPal earlier. Fees, man. On top Woo. of the eBay fees, full on rape. PayPal, they know they getting over. Yeah. Uh, Nike opened an investigation to James's Fugazi Empire last March. Foo foo. Uh, sending a team of investigators to dig up dirt on the business. Uh, why does this feel like? Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm an electrician, so maybe think about the Edison Tesla wars. Like how Edison was an agent. To Tesla's workshop, yeah. I actually had <laughs> I actually dirt. had agents sent to my um my release my oh my grand opening oh what yeah <laughs> wow yeah I had some spies come through oh my god um, Morocco Mo came yeah. through along with damn along Man, with the figures <laughs> listed investigators discovered that James received as many as a hundred sh- shipments from foreign countries between 2009 and 2015. A federal warrant said that he imported the items, or the imported items were from Hong Kong and China, and most were described as shoes or footwear. Uh, No criminal charges have been filed yet, but they will. Uh, But James could potentially face charges of wire fraud, 
money mm-hmm. laundering, uh-huh. and trafficking in counterfeit goods. As of this podcast, Supply PDX's online presence has been seemingly wiped clean. Yeah, try to go on their website. Or their social media is non-existent. Seems like he'll be in club fed in no time. Most definitely. Uh, it was so yes, funny. Uh, when that news broke, man, I'm telling you. It was, I just know. Somebody had that meme where it's like the face uh, somebody will make when they realize that their whole sneaker collection came from Supply PDX. Right. Somebody out there is living that meme. Well, you know, the crazy thing is he actually bought real shoes from people. And a lot of people started getting nervous thinking that. Um, the feds were going to come looking for people that he bought shoes off of and uh-huh. questioning them and everything. But I don't think they're really looking for that. I, they care more about the la- the money laundering <clears throat> and the fake shoes than they would actually him buying real shoes from people. Right. I mean, that's the thing. And, I mean, what's the saying? Like, every good lie has a little bit of truth. Oh, yeah. Involved. So that's a, I think he was probably using that motto, like, okay, I'm going to sell these fakes, but I'm going to also sell a few real shoes yeah. to kind of throw everybody off. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, basically hey, this story, pretty, you paid a pretty girl to take you to prom. You get more pretty girls. Hey, this, but this story pretty much just, you know, validated what everybody already knew. Like everybody knew they were suspect to begin with. I remember, um, what's my man's name from here? Scoop did a video. I think it was the Supreme Fives. I the, seen uh, that. Camo, yeah. They're both camos, like, exactly <laughs> the same. Like, both prints. Like, what? that's not supposed to be like that. Yeah, the, the, mm. just the shape of the shoe was way off. Mm. Uh, you can push, pu- pull up the mesh. I mean, <laughs> yeah, the mesh was, like, sticking out an inch away from the shoe. Shout out to Fat Man Scoop. Oh, we're uh, not talking about the same scoop. <laughs> like, no, we're not talking about the same What about Timberland? Nope. Whatever right. I say, y'all gotta do. Whatever I say, y'all gotta do. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, so... I just want to thank each and every one of y'all uh, for all you've done to uh, your bodies. Oh, thank James. you, Scoop. Thanks, Scoop. Is that James? It's oh, still real Scoop. to me, damn it. Oh, the shoe's real to you? Oh, is this James? This is James from prison. Uh, thank y'all guys. The shoes y'all are not real. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mr. Take it Mark, easy, man. They're not real to us. Lay off, James. They're not real to us, damn it. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, so a lot of people are getting sued. Let me see. Which one do I like to get? Oh, this is funny. People are using fake money uh, to scam sneaker resellers. In an article written by well, Riley Jones for Don't Call sneakers, Me Curry. Uh, police in Calhoun County, Michigan, uh oh, are dealing with multiple cases Where of counterfeit money somewhere off my map uh, being used to purchase sneakers. WWMT reports that each incident started on Facebook, of course where the suspects arrange deals with their victims and then use fake $100 bills to buy the shoes. I want to get them dollar pins. They got an example of these bills. I want to see what it looks like. Uh, in one such case, the seller quickly realized the cash was fake and ended up following the suspect back to his home. Ooh, that could have that could have got real bad. Mm. Uh, Battle Creek Mayor Jim Grafton has even urged victims not to take matters into their own hands. You take my money, we're going to have a problem. Uh, a court... Home. He's going to shoe you to death with that size 15. <laughs> nah, that's, shoe you to that's death. That's worse than being smited. <laughs> uh, you know what's crazy? We had, we had, had stone, tart, feather. Right. Speaking of sh- shoes or shooters, we had two of them in my plant this weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah. I heard about that. One dude broke in. Obviously, the first the, it was over a girl, which is I think is lame to fight over a girl because if she was your girl, you wouldn't have to fight over in the first place. But he came in there and broke in. They called him. Uh, but the thing I think that really pissed a lot of people off is that management didn't tell anybody until after the fact. Like, this dude came in there threatening to shoot the whole place up, you don't tell anybody. Yeah. Uh, so I'm like, I, you know, if I had I been there and I got shot, it man, there's not enough zeros that I could have been behind any number between 1 and 10 on that lawsuit. All That's right. That's the judge. That's literally the judge that would have been in charge of that trial. If you was there, your shoe would have shielded everybody, so it would have been a safe work environment. <laughs> That's why they ain't tell nobody. But then, so, oh, Caesar's here. Nope, Caesar was not there. <laughs> I was at your grand opening. And then nah. on top of that, three hours later, another guy threatened to shoot up the place. I'm like, man, like, and they all hid behind Caesar's shoes, and they were safe. Oh, y'all horrible. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Exactly. <laughs> Can you imagine a Thank size you, 15 Sandler. steel toe? Let's see, Let's see, y'all are horrible. Yeah. I thought I had friends. Uh, according to police, the same scam is taking place on three separate occasions <laughs> over the last week. They're, yeah, so much for having friends. Uh-huh. Uh, and they say each one is connected. In two of the cases, police were police were able to apprehend suspects and hit them with additional drug charges. So it sounds like this is more than just sneakers. Uh, that's wow. So I don't know what they're doing in Calhoun County, but uh, 
these fake one hundred dollar bills. That's you know in I mean? Battle Creek. Wow. Near Battle Creek. So that's okay. So that's West. That's almost Chicago. Yeah, that's West. That sounds like some Chicago type stuff. All right. Uh, Fifty thousand dollars in sneakers stolen during storage unit break in. Mm. Uh, in an article written by Brendan Dune, there he is. Dune <laughs> for soul collector. Uh, thieves in Atlanta made off with hundreds of pairs of shoes, snatching thousands of dollars of inventory while ransacking a storage unit. Uh, the victim. I just always like to hear that ransacking. Yeah, that sounds like such <laughs> right. Eighteen hundred. Tim's mouth just started watering. Like, is that like dong too? <laughs> Set, what? <laughs> no more yanking my wanking. Dong need Ram- food. Ram sack. Supreme. And a large penis. <laughs> Tim. Selfish. And we'll take two large penises. Who's we? Uh, Who's we? Tim's in the sharing mood. Right. Uh, <laughs> we. Oh, man. That's messed up, Guru. Uh, the- oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go get you an ice cream cone, champ. The sprinkles? Yeah, sprinkles one, are for the con- one of the conditions of uh, Guru's release from jail for stalking LeBron is that he's not able to get on the uh, mic. He can be in the studio. He just can't be on the microphone. <laughs> he has to watch us talk. Tim. Ted's building Yeezy boots and Guru's building bad vacuums. Yeah. <laughs> He's the first person to get hit with three straight drops in a row. <laughs> that shit is so hilarious. He out here breaking records on the show. <laughs> he out here like, he like levitate, 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 levitate. <laughs> oh, my God. Four. That's four. He got a bad vacuum. Oh, man. That's Guru posing as a maid in Guru's house. Oh, man. In LeBron's house. Yeah. He's wearing a rig. All right. Uh, the victim reseller. 23 Penny says he uh, was out of town at a sneaker convention when it happened. Dang, 23 Penny got hit? Yep. Uh. When he returned to his storage unit, which houses a portion of the inventory for his online business, the on-site manager let him know there was an incident. Uh, the worst case scenario happened, he said in an interview after the robbery. They stole pretty much all the shoes. Mm. He estimates the thieves took upwards of 400 shoes worth around $50,000 in total. Do that math. Uh, from some of the stuff he says, let's call Gavin real quick. Uh, from some of the stuff he says they left behind, high value, <laughs> high value shoes like Pinnacle Air Jordan ones. It's clear that whoever was behind the robbery <laughs> didn't know much about sneakers. According to Twenty Three Penny, the thieves rented a storage unit in the same facility as as he is on Friday, and returned during the week, weekend to ransack. There you go, uh, <laughs> some seventy one units. He says he filed a police report in addition to the one filed by the storage unit facility. Fortunately, many of the sneakers taken in the robbery robbery were on the low end in value. 23 Penny says that he's remaining positive about the situation. I'm fortunate enough to have a business where I have a lot of people that support me. I have a great infrastructure set up where I'll be able to bounce back. So. I just want to say one thing to all of you. What's that? Don't listen to the names that people call you. Ten. If you believe in Don't yourself, listen to that. then nobody can hurt you. Ten. Uh, you are your ten. own rainbow. You are your own rainbow, inc- 23 Penny. The- oh, wow. <laughs> no, but it's it's messed up <laughs> because, you know, can I, well, this is a real question, but can you insure a storage uh, unit? I would think I so. I would think so. I'll insure my shoes. And on top of that, um, it's real hard to base the value on a shoe <clears throat> in your heart versus basing the value of what they see on the internet. So well, even though he calls it 50000 you know, most insurance companies might just look and say, well, we'll give you a thousand eight hundred dollars like but you just he, never they're know. gonna go off market value yeah yeah because yeah. if he had the all those shoes listed to sell you know what i'm saying he probably valued i mean you know well, came some i will say this some that. insurance places uh will consider how much you pay for them like my insurance i'm not gonna say but they basically what i pay for it is the amount that they're going to hold, and it holds its value throughout the course of my. Is that turn. them drilling Caesar's soul in? Uh, ha, 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 ha. That, was, that, was, that was all those deductions from his taxes besides fifteen. <laughs> 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 it's a deduction for big feet because I did uh, not man. add that in. We so, got time for one more. Uh, uh, size one more, bro. Size sixty-four one more. shoelace, major deduction. All right, so somebody, <laughs> a man was found guilty. A first degree murder after killing a sneaker store owner. In an article written by Riley Jones for Complex Sneakers. Don't call me Curry. Uh, justice was finally served in the 2015 case of Tallahassee, Florida, sneaker store owner who was beaten to death in his own shop. Uh, the Tallahassee, cold. that's just out code. The Tallahassee uh, Democrat reported that Antoine Hawkins was found guilty of first degree murder, robbery, arson, 
tampering with physical evidence in Grand Theft Auto after 24-year-old Aaron Goodwin was found dead in the store he owned called Exclusive Heat last May. There's been a lot of young guys getting killed. He was going for that five-star in Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, Yeah, what? Uh, (laughs) Authorities also found Aaron's car on fire that same morning. Mm. Damn. After months of investigating, Antoine, I mean, your parents do not love you giving me that name, uh, was arrested last July when police say he attempted to sell stolen sneakers from Aaron's store. Prosecutors were convinced that Antoine, you know what it made me think about when, like, uh, somebody, some comedian said, like, when you name your kid Jeeves, you pretty much mapped out what their life is going to be. <laughs> like, when you name your kid Antoine, you pretty much, <laughs> they pretty much going to grow up to be criminals. I hate you. Antoine. <laughs> Antoine. Like, no, like, you ain't put no thought into it. I that, hate man. you. I hate you so much. Keep reading. Uh, prosecutors were convinced that Antoine <laughs> committed the murder alone. However, two other men still face accessory charges for helping him dis- um, dispose of the vehicle. Although prosecutors had pushed for the death penalty, WCTV asked that the jury recommended a sentence of life in prison with no parole. Why are we wasting taxpayer money with this? Like, if we know he did it, then let's just do everybody a favor and get rid of this guy. Oh, we like prison food and penis. You no, know he doesn't even deserve that. Like, just get rid of this guy. Put some, like, take him outside, lay him down in a dumpster with some newspaper. I drop him to death. They- <laughs> Hit you over the head in the rock and throw yeah. you in the moat. Instead of crushing like, glass like, and putting I in his food. So, like, people that we know. He need to go to the LaQuint Dickies. That dude. <laughs> wow. Oh, my, that's lovely that is. Oh, wow, man. People that we know are just this far gone. Like, I, I just feel like let's just save Boy, everybody the trouble and money. get it worse man, than that. Man, yeah, and rest <laughs> in peace to young good one, too. So, man. he can escape? He can, like, convince them to give him a gun and a horse? Mm-hmm. Yeah, rest in peace to Young Goodwin, bro. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yep. All right, uh, release dates. A lot of shoes coming out, so I hope you got your... Uh, well, I know people ain't got their tax return money anymore. They spent that. Hope uh, White Ranger got the Gordons ready. There you go. <laughs> Wednesday, April 20th, you got the Nike SB Dunk Low Premium Hemp. Uh, Cameron Special Edition Reebok Ventilator Purple Haze. Previously wrote in 2001. <laughs> yeah. Sneakers and Stuff Special Edition, Adidas Stan Smith Tuxedo, sold exclusively at Sneakers and Stuff. Uh, Thursday, April 21st, got the Nike Airmore Uptempo OG Black White, the Nike Footscape Magista Blue Black Gum, Nike Air Griffey Max 1 Freshwater, the Undefeated Special Edition Nike Dunk Lux. It took forever uh, for that shoe to come out, and it finally came out. Uh, you got the Nike LeBron 13 On Court. That is a European release only. Friday, April 22nd, got the Graphers Rock Special Edition Puma Displays Pack. That's a nice pack. Uh, do not sleep on that. Displays? Uh, I was just about to, You took the words right out of my mouth, bro. Uh, <laughs> Gay! Look, that was a little bit. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was All right, keep going. Of, yeah, yeah, it was a slight tinge of gay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rihanna. <laughs> special- <laughs> you suck, Caesar. How about that? <laughs> Rihanna Special Edition Puma First Slides. Saturday, April 23rd. You got the sneakers and stuff, special edition, Adidas equipment running guidance, all go. That's a long ass name, too. Sold exclusively at sneakers and stuff, also. Sunday, April 24th, you got the Adidas Boston EQT Support 93. Mm. Monday, April 25th, you have the Converse Chuck Taylor 2 Knit Collection. Uh, that is the North America release only. About time. Yes. Tuesday, April 26th, you have the Nike Air Phone Posit 1. Wu Tang, even though there's not anything Wu Tangish about that shoe, it's killer B man. Uh, I actually wore my Wu Tang socks today. <laughs> now if they put the stripes on it that they put on the uh, Sharpies. That'd be dope. Yeah. Uh, the Reebok Alien Sniper. I do not know why they brought this shoe out or are bringing the shoe out. It's not the Max. Uh, Thursday, April twenty eighth, got the Nike Kobe Eleven Draft Day. The Nike Free Mercurial Superfly Black Bright Crimson. Nike Air Presto Ultra Flyknit Coverlays. <laughs> Coverlays. Colorways. Exclusively. It's pronounced Gordon. I went almost the whole show without one. <laughs> exclusively on the Sneakers app. Uh, then you have the Air Jordan Retro 10, New York City. Uh, that is on a Thursday, so get ready for that one. Uh, Friday, April 29th, you have the Adidas Crazy Light Boost 2.5 James Harden Home B. I'm sorry, I just had to laugh at that. Like, it just, you said they weren't going to make the playoffs last week. They Okay, so they made the playoffs just to lose he, he the wearing, next four games. He wearing his PE. They got to play four extra games. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Saturday, April 30th, got the Air Jordan Retro 1 High OG David Letterman. 
uh, the closer I get to that release date, the more I want them. The Air Jordan Retro 6 GS Bright Mango. Please do not waste your money on that shit. Please, please don't. Release it Ugliest. Uh, you got the Nike Free and Ever Woven. Black White. The Air Jordan Retro 6 GS Green Glow. Thursday, May 5th, you have the Nike KD Elite Gray. The Nike LeBron 13 Elite White. The Nike Kobe 11 Tinker. Uh, the Nike Tiempo Veta Black. Nike Air Presto Triple White. And the Nike Air Presto Ultra Flyknit. Uh, that is the global release for that shoe. Saturday, May 7th, you have the Air Jordan Retro 10 GS Premium Pro White. They don't seem that special. I, 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 I struggle to find something. The steels without the steel. Basically. Hurt. That's more of the aluminum version of that shoe. Uh, the Air Jordan Retro 10 Rio. Uh, it's all right. Saturday, May 14th, we have the Air Jordan Retro 10 Chicago Flag. Uh, yeah, that was a garbage. Air Jordan Retro 10 Los Angeles. I'm not really Double impressed poo. by those. Uh, Adidas Crazy Light Boost 2.5 James Harden the White P. I'm sorry. If they like, really think reason, that he's going to be. be I'm out, sorry. Like, they, they, they will be out the playoffs. I get a then. chuckle every time I read he has a shoe. Like, it's just like, why? They will be out the playoffs by Oh, my God. Uh, Air Jordan Retro 10 GS Vivid Pink. That's probably going to be another crazy release with grown men fighting over a girl shoe. Mm. Uh, Nike Kyrie 2 crossover. Saturday, May 21st, you have the Air Jordan Retro 2 Low Chicago. The Air Jordan Retro 6 GS Cool Gray. Uh, the Air Jordan Retro 12 GS University Blue. I am so mad that it's a GS shoe. <laughs> so upset. And this next shoe, I, I'm not a fan of it at all, but I know other people are. The Air Jordan Retro 4 Premium Snake Skin. That's a trash shoe. I, I don't get why. Uh, still no word on official release dates for the Extra Butter Special Edition Diodora N9000 Giallo. The upcoming Adidas Ultra Boost 2017 colorways. The Pharrell Special Edition Adidas Boost NMD. The Adidas Kobe Vino pack. I want that pack. It's not uh, going to come in 15. Keep going. Uh, shut your first. Uh, the upcoming Nike Air Max 1 Ultra Fly Knit colorways. The upcoming Nike Hyper Dunk 2008 Tono colorways. Mm. The Nike it's Air- pronounced I said Gorgon. it right. I caught myself. Exactly. The Nike Air Hirachi Ultra Military Green. The Nike Zoom All Out Fly Knit. Uh, Vote Pink. The Nike Kobe 11 Mark Parker Paris. Uh, that, is, that is full name. Uh, the Nike LeBron 13 Low Bread, the Jordan Horizon Premium Brown Croc. I actually like that shoe. And, That's going to look horrible in a 15. Oh, God damn it. The Air <laughs> Jordan Retro 4 Premium Lausidia. Also, there are a number of shoes releasing overseas with no set release date for here in the States, such as the Nike LeBron 13 Encore, the Jordan Reveal Black Gray. Uh, stay tuned to sneakerbardetroit.com for more sneaker news and release dates. Uh I was going to say something. I lost my train of thought. Anyway, uh, y'all know what time of the show it is. Hello, gentlemen. <laughs> it took you a minute. <laughs> I'm, uh, he was feeding 10. <laughs> wow. Some dog. Yep. <laughs> I'm actually uh, recovering right now. Uh-oh. It was a long, long night in Las Vegas last night. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh, and the ladies there. Oh, my. We did some damage in the city of sin. <laughs> That's all I got to say. I'm done. Thanks. Did you find any uh, bad vacuums out there? Uh, there were a few, let's say, vacuum bags. Whoa! Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my god. But it was a wonderful weekend. And big love to all my ladies out there. Right. In Las Vegas. But for now. This is the Sneaker Box Podcast, Ladies Sneakerheads of the Week. I gotta give a shout out to Lulu Shook. I can't forget Tandre. We gotta get back on the show before she leaves. Yes, yes we do. <clears throat> something I said, is that why she's leaving? Oh, no, no, no. It's, not, it, I think it's, it's probably like, something you did. Well. <laughs> you didn't call her back. She thanked me afterwards, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Never returned her phone calls, I think that's why she's mad. <laughs> 
my, my phone was out of order. I'm sorry. I, I lost my <laughs> cell phone. I couldn't make it to the phone in time. Wow. <sighs> and a shout out to Lily Fenjo and VZB23. Can't forget my girl CC Blue NYC. And then there's Jasmine Marie 21. Oh, and she's every bit 21 and legal, let me tell you. <laughs> Big shout out to Heart Lady in Blue, if you will, S. Mims. She's serving in the military. Salute to all our troops out there, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. You do us proud. And I want to hear from more of you ladies in the service. Because you know I got big love for you. Sorry, my phone's ringing. I, I thought that was a little booty call coming in early for the day. It's only like noon. I know. It's early for me. <laughs> Gotta also give a shout to uh, Miss Photogenics. She is photogenic. I have pictures to prove it. <laughs> 23 Soul Queen. 609 Layla. Let me tell you what I like to... No, I'm not even going there. It's too... <laughs> Low-hanging fruit. You taking the O out of that? <sighs> oh, my God. Uh. <laughs> Can't forget Tanji. And, of course, Sneaker Girl. Yep. And what would a day be without my girl, Tanita, down in Dallas? Hey, Tanita. Those are the Lady Sneaker Heads, the Lady Sneaker Box. Help me out with this. The Sneaker Box Lady Sneaker Heads of the Week. Thank you. <laughs> Man. My my head is in Vegas still. Oh my god! I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm is, so is scared this, of FCC. Is, is Vegas with Caesar's throat? Ha ha ha! Hey, you know, wow. can you play the commercial real quick? Which one? That uh, this uh, well, I guess everybody know by now. Uh, well, you should know if you, unless you don't have a TV or friends. Uh, the Warriors obviously beat the Bulls record. Remains to be seen if they're going to win a championship, but they just beat the Rockets. Like they actually announced the seventy-three and nine color of the Curry to win a yeah. Too. Well, they just beat the Rockets without Steph Curry, so you know there you go. Uh, and Kobe retired, uh, and they had I honestly Nike had one of the best commercials I've seen in a while from them. Yep. The uh, it's called the Conductor. If you haven't seen it, look it up on YouTube. But that commercial was awesome. I was so sad and by Rasheed Wallace's hair in that commercial. <laughs> so sad. I was surprised that he uh, he he uh, reached for his uh, his Blazers. Yeah, Blazers. Well, he, somebody. Well, they him. lost to the. I guess he lost to Kobe in the Blazers because they actually beat Kobe with. Yeah, the Pistons, and they had so. a family doing the Pistons already. Yeah, so that made sense. And they were in the commercial. He was playing Portland. Yeah, you know so those are Rasheed sighting in that commercial. And you know, Scotty Pippen wasn't going to do the commercial. So who else could they get? <laughs> Where's uh Brian Grant at? But uh, Damian Stoudemire. Yeah, I love this commercial. And there's a guy in here that reminds me of you. Cause I remember you so say over the weekend you sent me that picture with the gorilla and some sneakers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, all right, asshole. I love this commercial. I've been hating you. <laughs> Too long. Look at this chubby dude. To stop now. You're retiring. Jeannie was like so uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> and you want to be free. My hate was growing stronger. Paul Pierce don't know what team he on. As you became a <laughs> habit to me. Popcorn guy reminds me of you. Don't make me 
Fuck girl guys, just like I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> this dude they saw the back of popcorn in all game, like just... You know, that was a good commercial and the uh Kobe Apple T V commercial where uh, uh Michael B. Jordan yes, yes, the time those good Kobe, commercials. Kobe's personality this year really has made him, you know more lovable. Yeah. Actually, I, I pray to God he goes on NBA TV. I mean, not, I, or NBA TV, inside TV. Uh, I don't think Kobe can be a commentator because he can't be. Kobe doesn't have that in him. Like, oh, yeah, this is the guy's best guy in the I league. I think like, if you Kobe, put him in a group, like the inside the NBA group, nope. I think that works. He, I think that grows. Could you, could you imagine Kobe sitting in the room like, yeah, uh, this guy's the best guy in the league right now. He can't be guarded. And I can he, see him back talking. in his mind, he's thinking, like, I will destroy this guy. But you can say that, though. Like, I, like Kenny the Jet Smith. Who thought that Kenny the Jet Smith was that funny? Kenny the Jet Smith don't have five rings. But you Kenny, got personality, though. He doesn't have – he is not arguably one of the greatest basketball players. I mean, but he can still time. go on there and talk some trash. Like, Shaq got four rings. Yeah, but – and Shaq talks down about Dwight Howard on the daily. <laughs> well, Dwight Howard gives him ammo. But Kobe's going to talk down about everybody. And I cannot wait to see that. I, honestly, me personally, I hope he goes to inside the NBA and doesn't go to ESPN because ESPN has the worst Kobe is in, NBA the, in his house turn, doing turnaround jumpers into every room into his house. <laughs> He's leaning on the wall like, oh, you can't guard me. Oh man! Shooting but baskets in the trash can. I love that. Sh- I love that commercial, man. That, that was good. The, he's shooting his washcloth in the sink. Right, but in anytime I want everybody to do this, watch the video on YouTube and like when you see the popcorn guy, like going, "I hate you, I hate." Like, just think of truth. Just every, just do that for me. Uh, yeah, that's how that works. Uh, shout out, <laughs> shout out, real quick. Uh, I got my man Mike Rich. Who's that? Uh. Follow me on Instagram at rich underscore Mike23. That's what makes this so difficult. <laughs> Shout out to Mike Rich. We yeah. were the same size shoe. I didn't know that. Uh, do y'all? Yeah. Wow. Uh, follow him on his YouTube channel at Rich's Kicks. DD Negron, a.k.a. Kick It With DD. Follow her on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe to her YouTube channel. Check out her Instagram page, Kick It With DD 365, as she highlights a lady sneaker here each day for this entire year. Check out my main man, my big bros. Sean Paper Chester Williams and D Wells from OSD Live. Check out the past and present episodes on iTunes and Android podcast apps. Uh, most spot, <laughs> most spots, most sports talk with Christopher Henderson, aka Hollywood Code Five. Uh, check out their. I think they're doing it out of Dallas. Uh, check out their show. Uh, oh, it's on Android. I you know I gotta find out from them. I gotta get that information. I don't know why I haven't gotten it. Uh, so far but anyway I, I definitely think it's on SoundCloud or something like that um, but follow the show on um, Instagram and follow Hollywood Code 85 on there as well uh, Juan Neal the Loose Cannon Lifestyle Clothing Label go to shop lcls.com to check out the selection of t-shirts and apparel you can also follow him on Instagram at Loose Cannon Brand uh, if you live in a metro Detroit area, you can go to a store that he has with, uh, along with sneaker customizer, Illionaire, located at 195 West Nine Mile Road, Suite B2 in Ferndale, Michigan. And go ahead and come up there. I'm about to head up there now. Challenge me on that NBA Jam Tournament oh. Edition. We can get it popping. Juice mode and all. <laughs> uh, also, shout out to 8 9. Uh, they definitely hooked me and my wife up. Um, my, my wife was ooh. See, <laughs> ooh, I know I ooh myself. Ooh, uh, so yeah, she was mad because they, you know, she was like, "What are women's clothes at?" Because all their clothes are for like men and stuff. It was those guys who had those uh, pink twelves. They got them all. <laughs> they bought all the shirts for the women. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so uh, they showed some love, so I was able to get her a shirt. So follow, uh, check them out, eight nine dot com. Um, type in code TSBP to save yourself an extra twenty percent. Uh, at the time of checkout, uh, go to sneakerbardetroit.com for your sneaker news, reviews, and release dates. Shout out to Alan and Mario, uh, the Brain Trust. 
And also remember, use Crip Protect, the official partners of the Sneaker Boss Podcast, to clean and protect your shoes from anything life or nature throws at it. Except your wife. Get, yeah, whoever that was, that Brandon. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that would not protect you from your wife. Crip Protect would not protect you from your wife. Uh, get the most out of your sneakers. Practice safe stunting and go to CrepProtect.com to get your shoes some protection. You can also follow them on Instagram and Twitter at CrepProtect. All right, I'm the African Caesar. Uh, why not to step out? And it's no drop true with a drop. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, we'll see y'all next time, man. This is episode 76. See y'all at 77. You can't handle the truth. Juan. 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 Yeah, Caesar. What's wrong? My shoes are dirty, and I have a date tonight. If she sees my dirty shoes, she'll call me a poop and slam the door in my face. Uh. Juan. 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 Caesar, why'd you slap me? Uh. Bro, all you have to do is use the crep cleaning kit and crep rain and stain resistant barrier spray. And you'll be all set for your dates. Wow, Caesar. My shoes look amazing. And that jelly from that donut you spilled on my shoes rolled right off. Now I'm ready for my date, and I might even get laid. Ha! I'm sure you won't get laid tonight, but you'll look good walking home alone, and your shoes will look great. Practice safe stunting. Go to CrepProtect.com and get your shoes some protection. We all know why I'm going to need it tonight. Hurt.